Hello everybody, this is MTG Degree. My name is Luke. And today we learn something new, which is that the foiling process has changed as far as I can tell. I've got this uh, acetone nail polish remover right here. You can just pick that up at your store. If you've got sensitive skin, please use some nitrile gloves or something while you're using this stuff. Now, recent cards, you take the acetone, you'd put it on the card, and you'd rub away, and the ink would just fall right off, right? Well, it looks like uh, somehow our foils have become like a more premium product. I cannot get off any ink whatsoever with acetone solution, which to me is just blowing my mind. So, uh, yeah, it looks like the recent sets have changed this, but as recently as Cons Block for sure, um, yeah, you could you could take off the ink with acetone. So this is a surprise to me. So let's switch to some older cards where we can actually take this off. All right, here we go. We've got a card from Cons. We'll see if maybe just for some reason my nail polish remover isn't working, but I don't see why that would be. And let's try to get the coating off of this guy. This is a less garbagey card, but you know, you gotta make, you gotta make the YouTube videos, man. So. Let's see, is the ink gonna come off like it should? Yeah, there we go. Ink's coming right off. Now, one thing that you wanna know when you're doing this is you want to do this as fast as possible. You wanna push down, really get the ink off quickly. And the reason why is because the acetone tends to seep around the borders of the card. And when it does that, it causes the borders to uh, lift off and cause discolorations, which you really don't want. So you wanna work on the borders as quickly as possible. And you can see that the ink is coming off like actually really easily. This only takes, you know, well, it should be less than a minute because you should be doing it as quick as possible. Of course, since I'm chatting, it might take me a little bit longer. And this is really surprising to me. Uh, I find it amazing that the new foiling process is immune to acetone, which is a very strong solvent. Um, so it turns out that the, uh, the premium product that they have been talking about this whole time is actually quite premium. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, this, this uh, kitchen thing, kitchen towels are uh, like one ply, pretty cheap stuff. So they're just falling right apart on me. Okay, so we have defoiled successfully a card here. And um, yeah, let's let's look again at this Lithomancer's Focus. That was fascinating to me. I don't know if... Uh, if maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough, but it felt like I was trying pretty hard. Wow. Now that is incredible. So uh, I guess news alert, the new cards do not accept defoiling. The foiling process now is extremely premium. These are very resistant. Wow, good job wizards. I mean, it stops me from doing this uh, foil token thing, but that's not really what foils are for. All right, so now we are defacing an F&M promo because since I moved here, there's only been the last two sets, which are apparently uh, undefoilable. So I just had to get some foils out of my trade binder, and well, that's when you start defoiling Stoke the Flame FM promos, eh? All right. So you can see the ink start to go away, and the higher percentage of acetone in your 
nail polish remover, you can get 100% acetone, and I really like working with that the most. Um, of course, they don't say the percentages on these unless it's 100%, so maybe this one is, you know, 51% and the rest of it is water. Uh, I can tell you, in the past, it has not been as difficult to remove the ink. However, I think that even if it was 100% acetone, it would not remove the ink on the new cards. Those are seemingly very resistant. Okay, so at the end of the process, you get these really shiny foils. I love messing with these things, and that process took me about, I don't know, maybe five minutes to do. I know I uh, fast-forwarded through a little bit of it because I was really having to work on getting the, getting the ink off. Now, the ink will be easier to get off if you get that 100% acetone stuff, the the good stuff, but I just got this from the school store or whatever, so, you know, it's not it's not 100%. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a clue token, I think, because there are gonna be a lot of clues in this set, so you're gonna need a few of them. Um, so, it's always good to have the name of the token, clue, yeah? And, uh, it, it's nice to have all the relevant information on your tokens. So let's start with some of the text. So it's a token artifact clue. So I'm just gonna write token artifact clue. Easy. And then the rules text is two. And then sacrifice this artifact. and then draw a card. And you can really see how great and amazing that my handwriting is. And you can be very jealous about the high quality there. Okay, so let's do maybe like, um, hmm, let's see. Well, magnifying glass is kind of all that I could come up with. I don't know, maybe I'm just not very inventive, but let's, let's do a magnifying glass. Draw a circle, freehanding circles is hard, but it's going well so far. Hey, that's not bad, okay. And then I'm gonna make it a little 3D or what have you. Is this, is this gonna work? Do some like tangential lines. And you know, you these tokens, are just, they're just fun to have around. So I wouldn't take the drawing of them too seriously. Okay, and then it'll have a little thing attached to it. Right? Do to do to do. And then what should our what should our thing be looking at? Um Hmm, what's very Innistrad like? Maybe a bone, yeah. A bone, yes. And then maybe some flavor text. Like Mr. Mr. Zombo's 
favorite chew toy. Perfect. So there you go, you have your own clue token now. <laughs> That's ultra shiny, and you know, it really gives you lots of room to be creative. So let's do another token. We're definitely gonna see some zombies in this set, right? So, zombie. And let's see, I actually have it here. Token creature zombie is the type. Token creature zombie. And like most zombies, you're gonna have a lot of tutus. Okay, so let's draw a zombie. And I personally am not very good at realism via thick Sharpie, although some people are quite artistic. So let's see, let's do a, a cartoony zombie. So let's get maybe a head and zombies that brains. So we'll do a bite mark maybe out of there and There's some brains, brains. Okay, so that's that's clearly some brains. No question. Some big eyes for our cartoon zombie. And it's mad. All right. So zombie body. Well, I think it's pretty clear that the zombies do this sort of thing. And It is walking. So as you can see, we are doing absolutely nothing fancy here. And we'll just draw some blobby cartoony hands like so. Right? Perfect. That is a zombie if ever I saw one. Perfect. So now if you make a couple of each of these with some of the junk foils that you have in your collection, then you too can have super shiny swaggy, ridiculous, however you want them tokens. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that you have fun at Shadows Over Innistrad pre-release. And as always, I'll see you next video. Oh, and one other thing I'd like to mention, which is that sometimes ink tends to slip. Even permanent ink sometimes has problems on these super glossy surfaces, so popping it in a perfect fit sleeve or even just a regular sleeve will help stop your ink from slipping. Okay, now for real, I'll see you next video.